Welcome back, everyone, everywhere. We are honored, privileged, and grateful to have you with us here at Eternity Through Christ. We are having a wonderful day here, and we just pray that you may be as well wherever you are. Let us hold off not any longer and go right in to chapter 2 of 2 Peter. Yes, chapter 2, audio edition of the second epistle, second letter from our brother Peter to us, the body, bride, and church of Christ Jesus. This second chapter has a header, and the whole entirety of it is about this topic here, about false prophets and false teachers. So just prior to diving in as usual, if you'd be so kind to join me in momentary prayer. Heavenly Father in Christ Jesus, thank you for the privilege for us to come together today and to dine with you in your most precious heavenly manna, your word. I just ask that our eyes, ears, and hearts be open and receptive to your word today for the personal message for each of us and as the whole collective in your body. And I just ask that anybody that may not know you viewing this, that they may come to receive you today. Come to listen to your word today and feel the joy of you, our Lord, our God, in Christ Jesus. And we thank you and love you, for you have loved us first. Amen. All right, brothers and sisters, going right forward, we're going to dive right in here. Chapter 2 of the second epistle of Peter starts as this, verse 1. But false prophets also arose among the people, just as there will be false teachers among you, who will secretly bring in destructive heresies, even denying the master who bought them, bringing upon themselves swift destruction and many will follow their sensuality and because of them the way of truth will be blasphemed and in their greed they will exploit you with false words their condemnation from long ago is not idle and their destruction is not asleep verse 4 now for if god did not spare angels when they sinned, but cast them into hell and committed them to chains of gloomy darkness to be kept until the judgment. If he did not spare the ancient world, but preserved Noah a herald of righteousness with seven others when he, bought, when he brought sorry, a flood upon the world of the ungodly. Repeat that. When he brought a flood upon the world of the ungodly. Verse 6, now, if by turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah to ashes, he condemned them to extinction, making them an example of what is going to happen to the ungodly, and if he rescued righteous Lot, greatly distressed by the sensual conduct of the wicked, for as that righteous man lived among them day after day, he was tormenting his righteous soul over their lawless deeds that he saw and heard. Verse 9, Then the Lord knows how to rescue the godly from trials and to keep the unrighteous under punishment until the day of judgment, and especially those who indulge in the lust of defiling passion and despise authority. Bold and willful, they do not tremble as they blaspheme the glorious ones, whereas angels, though greater in might and power, Do not pronounce a blasphemous judgment against them before the Lord. But these, like irrational animals, creatures of instinct, born to be caught and destroyed, blaspheming about matters of which they are ignorant, will also be destroyed in their destruction, suffering wrong as the wage for their wrongdoing. They count it pleasure to revel in the daytime. They are blots and blemishes, reveling, in their deceptions, while they feast with you. Who? Verse 14. They have eyes full of adultery, insatiable for sin. They entice unsteady souls. They have hearts trained in greed. Accursed children, forsaking the right way, they have gone astray. They have followed the way of Balaam, the son of Beor, who loved gain from wrongdoing, but was rebuked for his own transgression. A speechless donkey spoke with human voice and restrained the prophet's madness. Verse 17 now. These are waterless springs and mists driven by a storm. For them the gloom of utter darkness has been reserved. For, speaking loud boasts of folly, they entice by sensual passions of the flesh, 
those who are barely escaping from those who live in error. They promise them freedom, but they themselves are slaves of corruption. For whatever overcomes a person so that he is enslaved, sorry, to that he is enslaved. Verse 20 now. For if, after they have escaped the defilements of the world through the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they are again entangled in them and overcome, the last state has become worse for them than the first. For it would have been better for them never to have known the way of righteousness than after knowing it to turn back from the holy commandment delivered to them. In verse 22 to close it up, family. What the true proverb says has happened to them. The dog returns to its own vomit, and the sow, after washing herself, returns to the wallow in the mire. Returns to wallow in the mire. Amen, amen, amen. Now, this chapter is not for the faint of heart. This chapter is not for those who are filled and filled and filled with pride, walking in their own way, believing that remaining in sin, and believe that there is uh, salvation for those who want to remain wicked. This is a chapter of deep reverence to the Father God Almighty for a deep call to watchfulness and awareness in the Spirit. I don't know about anyone viewing this today, but I need to hear this. I think we all best crave the Word of God as pure milk and a babe, but yet we must move on to grow to maturity and to become one who craves and hungers after the meat and potatoes, who hungers after the deep reverential heavenly manas, the heavenly foods that excite, that grow us up in a most spiritual adherence to walk in a way, in the way, with Christ Jesus by only His doing in us through the knowledge of Him where grace and mercy be multiplied multiplied and abound deeply upon our lowly souls. For we cannot live the life that God calls us to live in our own strength. We cannot live the life that God calls us to live in our own understandings. But we must die to self and then be born again and to walk in the ways of the Spirit. And he says to do that, we must turn from darkness and walk in his light. We must be a people of repentance. We might walk down the weary road as travelers. There may be a season of remittance, of filling a sorrow and darkness of the soul. All of the ancestors of faith have been there, and many are there today. But if you hear the voice of one crying out in the wilderness, make your way straight, prepare your heart for the Lord is coming and his time is at hand. He will return any moment now and we are not promised tomorrow. Let us be fast, steadfast that is. Let us be found standing now while this is still today, while this is the moment. Now is the acceptable time. Let us be found interceding, praying for one another, with one another, walking together in one accord to be only what the Lord can make us to be by his glorious grace by his ways because the wages of sin are death but the free gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus he alone is able to do only what he can do through us and for us but we must trust him and walk with him in one accord there is a verse here two verses that really can grasp us and make us feel as if we could just have no hope but then we must remember where our hope is to be found and that is in Jesus Christ and in the Father God. For Christ was sent to be the remittance of our sins, the forgiveness of our sins, so that we could turn from sin and cling to Christ and walk with Christ. It's a motion. It's a relationship. But he tells us here in verse 20 about the people who have become enslaved to themselves, who have turned back to the way of error after receiving the grace of Almighty God. And I was once one of these people. And even in this latter season of my spiritual walk, in this current moment, there are days where you wake up and feel as if this is this way or this is that way and you begin to wonder things. But we have to remember that our faith is not based on how we feel, but our faith is based upon the Word of God, who God is in Christ and what He says stands and who He is is. He is who He says He is and we are who He says we are, but we best walk with Him and live as He has made us to be who we are to be in Christ Jesus. Can I get an amen? But he goes on to say here in verse 20 and 21, let's reference and repeat these verses. He says, For if, uh, 
after they have escaped the defilements of the world. Through the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they are again entangled in them and overcome. The last state has become worse for them than the first. Verse 21, For it would have been better for them never to have known the way of righteousness than after knowing it to turn back from the holy commandment delivered to them. And then verse 22 is the reference and the repetition of the proverb of the Old Testament where he goes on to tell us that what the true proverb says has happened to them. The dog returns to its own vomit and the sow or pig after washing herself returns to wallow in the mire. Let us wash ourselves. Let us walk forward, cleansed of all unrighteousness in the righteous path of Jesus Christ. Again, we can't, he can, but we have to let him. Let us not be found wathering back in the mud. Let us not be found romanticizing the former lusts, the former sins, the former ways. Because in this dark day, it is too easy to see it all around us. But we must have our hearts girded and firmly planted on the rock of salvation, Jesus Christ, and the written word to walk in the way of God Almighty. For the word is spirit and truth, and we must be fed spiritually, and we must stand firm in prayer, talking to God, those sweet communions. We can never have too much of the sweet communion with Abba Father. But these days are getting darker, and we need to be more serious about the Father's business now than we ever have been before. And I am one to speak from experience. It is too easy to begin to drift, family. It is too easy to begin to look to the left or the right. But we are told to never try, to never seek anything outside of Christ Jesus. We are told to never even glance over the fence of our neighbor's house so to speak, in the spiritual sense, or even physically, but so to speak, to look over the fence into someone else's greenery, their grass, because it's not greener there. Instead, it'd be where we'd be found in the green pastures and still waters of the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. But we know that He is the all in all, and He is indeed everything to those who love Him. Let us be found seeking Him now, for the days are not going to get lighter but the Savior's light is greater than the sun by day and greater than the moon at night. And through him and with him, the sun nor moon shall strike nor anything underneath the sun or moon because God is sovereign and he is in control and nothing can happen to the soul of his righteous ones without him allowing it. And let us be found withstanding the enemy's vices, overcoming him in the temptations and moving forward victoriously by the blood of the lamb, knowing that our salvation that our eternal destination was predestined from the beginning of time and the work that he's begun he will bring to completion because he is firm in his promise and he does not change. He is the unchanging, unfailing one and we just need to praise him and love him for who he is. Peace, grace, and mercy be with all in Christ Jesus. We'll see you in the third chapter of Second Peter. Lord willing, we'll see you then. Amen.